Thank you all for coming. Uh, so my name is Chester Kerm, and today I'm going to talk about why we're interested in online search data and how these data can tell us about events in the real world. Um, so to motivate our project, suppose you have a question, uh, like this guy up here clearly has a question. And um, if you're like me, the first thing you might do is you Google it. So you look for information on Google. Suppose you're wondering if you should come to some conference that you've heard about. You enter in some, some queries, and then you find some information. And based on the information you find, you proceed with some action or decision, like you all come to the conference, OK? Um, so uh, internet search engines, such as Google, uh, tend to provide uh, extensive data on their search activity. And the, uh, the interesting question, which has emerged in recent years, is whether or not we can uh, use these, uh, these search data to get a handle on this process, the information gathering stage, and whether or not we can use these information gathering signals to anticipate events in the real world. So there's a lot of different types of events that people could care about, but we chose to study financial market movements because uh, there's an abundance of data, and they're very easily quantified. And moreover, people uh, are interested about them in general. Right? So this is the big question. Can we use Google Trends data to anticipate financial market movements? Here's an image of a Google Trends time series, just an example. It's the time series for the word bank. <coughs> and um, you can see that it may be non-stationary, has some trends. And at any rate, uh, we're not exactly interested in the absolute search volume for some word, but rather in how changes in these search volumes might be related to subsequent financial market <coughs> movements. So we, we have to uh, difference this time series somehow, right? And we're going to difference it according to a simple moving average model. And in fact, our, as you just saw, our method can be interpreted as a simulated trading strategy. So here's how the strategy goes. It's Sunday of week T, and you look up the Google Trends search volume for your favorite word. OK, there it is in green. And then compare it to the mean over the previous delta T weeks. So here I use delta T equals 3. And now if the search volume this week is lower than the mean, then you buy an index on Monday, and you sell it back the next Monday, picking up the return of the index in that week. And conversely, if the search volume this week is higher than the mean, then you sell the index on Monday, and you buy it back the next Monday, and you pick up minus the return that week. So we chose to trade the S&P 500 uh, in this analysis, since we were looking at US-based Google Trends search volume. So in this way, any keyword that you think of can be associated to a cumulative return from this uh, imaginary trading strategy, right? So the logical question is, what is the magic word that has the, the highest return, right? So you can run this simple analysis on, uh, on thousands of keywords and uh, look at the winners, and here are the top five. So apparently, the magic word is show with a return of 253%, right? So clearly, you can't learn anything from this analysis because it's not clear what, if anything, these keywords have to do with each other. Right? And it might be a bad question to begin with because we could just be seeing the artifacts of noise. That is, this could just be all be statistical fluctuations and we're not really learning anything. Right? So this is a common problem. And uh, the, the remedy is often to reduce the dimensionality of your data set. And that is when we're dealing with keyword data, we want to take all these keywords and we want to uh, aggregate them into, into groups or topics. Right? And there's different methods to do this. But um, when, especially when you're using keyword data, you want uh, the topics you find to have some semantic interpretation. Right? So you want words that mean the same thing to be grouped together. Okay? And uh, a, a popular algorithm to accomplish this is known as latent Dirichlet allocation, or LDA. So LDA leverages the simple observation that words with related documents or related meanings tend to occur in documents together. So for example, these are just toy documents. But the word debt is more closely related to the word housing than it is to the word orange. And this is reflected in the co-occurrence of these words across documents. Right? So in this way, we can hand a computer a large corpus of documents, and the computer can figure out which words are relating to each other without knowing anything about the, the words themselves, per se. Okay? And you might point out at this point that we could just go to a thesaurus and find groups of related keywords that way. right? And that's absolutely true. But for our purpose, we wanted a dynamic corpus, that is a corpus that is uh, continuously updated um, with current events, with events that we care about. Okay? Uh, so for this purpose, we went to Wikipedia. So now Wikipedia is our collection of documents. And we train an LDA model on the English Wikipedia. So the LDA model 
goes to every Wikipedia page and says, you are a document, where a document is a probability distribution over some number of topics. And each topic has some probability of generating various words, OK? So if I actually run an LDA on these three documents, I find two topics, one relating to fruit and the other relating to uh, debt, housing, and crisis. Right? So this is obviously not the real Wikipedia, so you want to see the results from the real Wikipedia. And here's a, a sample of the results. These are um, five just arbitrary topics we found on Wikipedia. There's something relating to uh, academia or education. There's business, another one relating to education, healthcare maybe. So you or I might disagree about what exactly these topics uh, are referring to. So in order to settle this, we appealed to workers on the service Amazon Mechanical Turk. So I won't go into too much detail about what Amazon Mechanical Turk is. But suffice it to say, it's a service whereby you can uh, farm out menial tasks to people all over the world for a small fee. So in this case, we paid workers to essentially take a vote on the names of these topics. Right? And here's some of the labels that they came up with. And you can see that if uh, two different topics were given the same label, I distinguish them with a Roman numeral. OK, that's fine. Uh, so here's the full list of topics that we recovered from Wikipedia. This is my very wordy slide. And so I don't expect you to read everything, but you can see that we're uh, recovering some meaningful topics. So we have energy, art, botany, and fruit, for example. So we're really running the whole gamut of human experience, which is sort of our objective. It's to get some unbiased sample of topics, right? Now remember that each one of these topics is a collection of words. We took the top 30 words from each LDA topic and said, okay, you're a topic. And each one of those words can be associated with the cumulative returns from that trading strategy I mentioned. So for example, here's the distribution of returns from the, the topic food. Okay, the median is exactly zero in this case, actually. And we can represent this distribution as a box plot, that little guy. Now if you'll permit me, I'm gonna rotate this box plot and show you the box plot for all the topics. So here they are. The topics are arranged on the uh, horizontal axis in order of their mean return. And on the vertical axis, you can see the actual distribution. And now, in order to get a sense of which of these topics might be related to subsequent <coughs> financial market movements, we have to compare to some benchmark. So we compare to a random strategy in which you trade randomly every week without any regard to what's uh, happening in the world around you. And when we compare to this random strategy, we find that two topics are significantly different, and those are politics one and business. So I shade them here by their mean return. Right? So this analysis was conducted for a single value of delta t, which was delta t equals three weeks. And so we have to test how sensitive these results are to that loan parameter in our trading strategy. And when we do that, we get a plot that looks like this. So it's kind of dark. But uh, so delta t is on the vertical axis. And I shade in uh, the box for a topic if the distribution of returns for that topic, for that value of delta t, was significantly different from the random strategy. And here we find uh, politics one and business are again significant, and also uh, politics two seems to be consistently significant here. Okay? And I'll mention that there are 55 topics here and 15 values of delta t, so we've just done 825 statistical tests. And I'll just mention that we do correct for the number of statistical tests when, uh, when finding these results. Okay. Now lastly, we can uh, study how these trends vary in time by repeating the exact same analysis in moving time windows. So here's the distribution of returns for those three topics in 2004 to 2007. And here business and politics one are significant. But as we enter the financial crisis, the returns from these topics grow tremendously until uh, after the financial crisis, when we exit, the returns diminish again. Okay, so what we're seeing here is that increases in search volumes for topics related to politics and business or finance um, tend to precede falls in the stock market. Okay, and there's uh, different possible explanations, but one possible explanation is that humans are loss averse. So that, um, say you're concerned about the state of the economy or your finances, you might look for information. You might look for information about your investments or about what's happening in the stock market, or you might even appeal to politicians whom you think have some large impact on the state of the economy. And we hypothesize that we're seeing traces of these information gathering signals in these results. So just to summarize, um, internet search engines, search data, like from Google, uh, provide the intriguing possibility to study the information gathering processes that precede real world events. 
Um, LDA is an effective means to reduce the dimensionality of keyword data when performing similar analyses so that you, you study underlying semantic factors of importance. And lastly, in this particular analysis, we find that um, search volumes relating to politics and business uh, can be linked to subsequent stock market moves, at least in the S&P 500. So thank you all, and I'm happy to take any questions. Uh, thank you very much. Could I just ask a bit about the names you were getting from MTurk? So one yeah. thing you could do was take your uh, the set of words for each topic that that um, LDA has created, and just use and just look those up on Google Trends. But was it the case that you took those words, gave them to some humans on MTurk who came up with an overall label, and you looked the label they came up with on Google Trends? I don't see what's what's the oh so bit so you the get words the, the MTurk bit. Yeah, so, so the MTurk pick is just to uh, assign a label to some groups of words, and the groups of words we find from Wikipedia. So we give the whole Wikipedia to the LDA, and the LDA will throw out words like the and 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 all these other things, right? So you get some, some uh, total number of topics. We take the top, from, from each, uh, <coughs> top words from each topic, so we get our words that way. And then those words we plug into the trading strategy. So we get the Google Trends search volume for all those words. The Amazon Mechanical Turk was just to give, just, a, just yeah, just to assign labels so that when we say there is increases in search volumes for things relating to business, people can't say, well, that's just your interpretation. I mean, they can always say that, but we we sort of farmed out the interpretation to many people. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. This is actually a follow-up question. So, did you ha already have um, predefined uh, labels for the groups? And um, did you give guidelines to the Turkers? And how many did you use? Uh, to verify basically your, um, your, your groupings? So um, I forget exactly what the threshold was. I think we had at least 20 votes per topic. So we just gave them the list of 30 words and we said uh, give a label to this group of words. So they had the choice. There wasn't a predefined set. Right, yeah, there, was, there were no choices. So yeah, I had to clean for like plurals and, and different versions so, of... So of politics too, for example, what, what did that mean? So that was politics. They assigned the word politics, but there was another one that was already called politics, so I had to distinguish them with the Roman numeral. So I put the Roman numerals there. Okay. But, but I mean, you saw that distinction, not the people in the, there wasn't sort of some kind of guideline. Yeah, for them. so, so the, the only distinction is the words that went in to the, the topic, and then they just gave it the same name as some other topic. Well, thanks for the presentation. It was really nice. Um, I have a question. How much are the results sensitive to the fact whether you did or did not hit the Lehman Brothers collapse? Because there was one week that could have made a difference in that. So whether the fact that you actually like yeah. short, short sold, yeah. whether it so, made So you can see we have, um, we did do the moving window analysis. Um, so you can see how, the, how you know, certain extreme days might play into the results. So in 2004, it, so of course, the, uh, the trading strategies really shine during the financial crisis. That's when the, their returns are highest. Um, but they're not insignificant outside of, outside of those ranges. And also, in the, in the actual paper, we do more um, stringent statistical tests. So we, like, uh, we shift the search volume signals, and we shuffle them, and we, we look at how the results play out that way. You compared to a uh, random strategy, you said? Yeah. Um, uh, can you quantify this precisely for me? Like, if you studied, what, what would your return be with uh, the Google strategy, and what would it be with a random one? And yeah, also, so and also uh, have, you s have you looked at comparing it with a benchmark like uh, win, stay, lose, change? Like, keep, Sorry, on playing, keep on playing while you win, and then switch if you lose, and so on. So just to, to get a trend. Oh, yeah, so we, we didn't do. Um, yeah, any trading strategy is more uh, sophisticated than the one I explained with the Google Trends. So the random strategy, um, your, your median return is zero. So you might have seen it's kind of shifted to the left a little bit. It's, uh, that's just because of the peculiarities of the log normal distribution, since these are per percentage returns. So you can't lose more than 100%, but your gains are unbounded. So it looks shift to the left, but the median is, is, uh, is zero. The expected return is actually positive, but this is like an ensemble average. We can talk more about that, but um, your, your expected returns from the Google Trend strategies were as high as 50%, um, which is actually about the same as buy and hold. So um, we're not saying that you can beat the market this way, but we're more interested in how um, the search activity could be related to, to market movements. Last question. 
how, uh, how do you so how do you select the number of topics? Oh, we chose a hundred, okay. right? And actually, so so I didn't mention this. <coughs> we chose a hundred to begin with. But then actually when we obtained the, the Google Trends search volumes, we downloaded it with the word Google together. So uh, just to sort of smooth out some of the noise, right, because it's scaled to the, the volume of, of Google in the same time period. And then after we've, we did this scaling, we found that 45 of the topics had um, insufficient search volume. So the search volume was like zero or one. It was, it was very small. So we threw them away and we were left with 55, so, 55 topics. So the results are the the one for the optimal number of topics? Yeah, we just, we sort of uh, just cut, we just introduced the threshold for the search volume. Okay. So we asked LDA for a, 100 topics, which is ar arbitrary, and then we cut the search volume okay. and what we were left with was those 55. Thank you very much.